Happy Hanukkah, folks! Today is December 24th, 2016. It is the first day of Hanukkah, and I am celebrating by eating a giant Hanukkah feast. Now, I am not Jewish, but if you are and you're celebrating Hanukkah, I'd love to see in the comments section what you're doing to celebrate, if you're with family and friends, and just how you're enjoying the holiday. Now, I've spent the last several hours putting together all this food, and it looks really good. I'm, I'm really excited to eat all of it. And uh, I just want to show you individually each item that I made right now. Some matzo ball soup, where the matzo balls are pretty much falling apart. Israeli salad, bagels and lox, some nice potato latkes, a big loaf of challah bread with gefilte fish, a nice shuk shaka, suf ganiot for dessert, and last but not least, a glass of Manischewitz kosher wine. Yeah. Only one glass for me tonight. Just a nice glass of wine. WMNTS in Central Ohio, you're watching Eating Cereal. So I'm going to get started, and today's lesson will be about the kosher winemaking process. So I'm going to try to eat all this food, and I'm not going to rigidly time myself on this because I want to take my time and enjoy all of it, but uh, I'll just tell you that starting time is 5.48 p.m., so that's where we're going to start from. Let's get it going. I'm drinking with my Hanukkah feast is called Manischewitz. It is my favorite wine. I'm not exactly a wine connoisseur, so I appreciate a wine for its sweetness and its affordability, and Manischewitz is tops in both of those categories. It is also a kosher wine, and in today's lesson I'm going to tell you a bit about the winemaking process in general and what makes a wine kosher. So the first step of the winemaking process is pulling the grapes from the grapevines and bringing them over to the press where the press extracts the grape juice from the grapes. And an interesting side note here, the main difference between, say, a $5 bottle of wine and a $20 bottle is in how much effort is put into separating the stems and the leaves from the grapes. So the cheaper wines have a higher stem and leaf content in them. Now once the grape juice has been extracted from the grapes, it flows into a fermentation tank where yeast is added now, yeast is a pretty interesting single-celled organism. It's considered a fungus, and unlike humans, it doesn't need the constant input of air or food or water to stay alive. It can technically live in a dormant state for millions of years. And the yeast respirate in two different ways, aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. Aerobic means in the presence of oxygen, which is basically what we do. We take in glucose, and we add oxygen and we create carbon dioxide and water uh, with the input of a lot of energy. And the yeast do this to some degree in the fermentation tanks, but what we really want to happen is this anaerobic respiration reaction, which is when we take glucose from the grapes and we turn it into ethanol and carbon dioxide. And ethanol is the alcohol that's found in wine. Now the reaction mechanism that drives this anaerobic respiration is very complex and goes beyond the scope of this lesson, but I'm going to post a link so that you can learn a little bit more about it if you want to. Now yeast is also used in the production of bread, but bread is not considered an alcoholic product, and that's because during the baking process the ethanol is boiled off, because what we're really after when we are adding yeast to the bread is to make the bread nice and puffy and the CO2 gas makes the bread shell expand so we get it nice and fluffy. So once the wine has exited the fermentation tank, in some cases in your more expensive wines it goes into an aging tank and in that process it goes through a whole range of different chemical reactions and quite honestly to the novice wine drinker 
everything that happens in the aging tank is not really discernible to the palate. So what makes a wine kosher? Well, here in the United States, kosher wines are often thought to be sweeter wines, and that's mostly just a historical coincidence because in the last 100 to 150 years, a lot of Jewish immigrants have come to the New York City area and they've established wineries. And the most abundant grapes in that region are the Concord grapes, which are the sweetest, so they give way to the sweetest types of wine. Now, when you think of kosher, you probably think of different rules for foods such as no shellfish, no insects, uh, no pork products, and no cross-contamination of meat and dairy. And technically, nothing that's in wine is considered non-kosher, but the process of production of wine needs to be kosher in order for the wine to be kosher. And what that means is that a high-ranking Orthodox Jew needs to oversee every step of the production process, and that person is most often a, an actual rabbi. Kosher wine can be taken one step further by making it kosher for Passover. And the only difference between kosher and kosher for Passover is that during Passover, Jews are not allowed to eat grains during the Passover cedar meal. And grains aren't really a factor in the winemaking process. So if your wine is kosher, you can be pretty sure that it's also considered kosher for Passover. So I hope you have enjoyed this lesson. And let's finish off this Hanukkah feast and enjoy the rest of Hanukkah. I'm going to take a break and then I'm going to finish off these last bits of bread in a few minutes. Oof. Well, I just cannot muster up the strength to finish off this last Sufangaya. So I'm just going to leave it for now. And, uh, but yeah, I'd say I ate about a good nine pounds of Jewish food this evening. A lot of really good stuff. So. Uh, so it was a, a good, a good, a good meal. So I'm just gonna finish things off by drinking this Mazel Tov cocktail. You can find the recipe to this cocktail as well as all the other foods I made in the description. And that'll do it for this episode of Eating Cereal. I hope you have a great Hanukkah, or Christmas, whatever you're celebrating. I hope it's a great one. I hope you have a great New Year as well. Achayim!